I'm very, very happy. Baruch Hashem, we had a new baby boy. A big, big simcha. Baruch Hashem. Bris coming up. Bisiat Deshmaya. We're moving into the world of Purim. We're moving into the world of Purim because the Shloshim Yoim Kaidim Achag, the 30 days before Purim, comes and blends together with Shoivim. And therefore, the tshuva that we're doing, the entire process of returning to Hashem, of purifying ourselves, the last week of Shoivim, already is transitioning into the light of Purim. Purim, it says, that we re-accepted the Torah. Ki mu kiblu. The Pasuk says, ki mu kiblu. They were Makayim. The Jews did. The Kiblu and accepted. So the Gemara says, what does it mean? They were Kimu and Kiblu. They did the Torah and they accepted it. Kimu, they did the Torah. Mashu Kiblu Kfar. They kept the Torah that they already received by Har Sinai. What do you mean? Didn't we already receive the Torah by Har Sinai? I'm going to talk a lot about this theme of re-accepting the Torah. What was different this time? We re-accepted the Torah from love. Ki mumashu kiblu kfar me'ava, me'ava sanais. Everything that happened on Purim made us fall in love with God in an unbelievable way. And so many of us know that like, whatever's going on in my life, if I have one good Purim, I'll save myself. One good Purim will change you for the rest of your life. You'll never be the same human being. L'toiv, for good. If you get ready for Purim in a holy halig away, it's that we do so much preparation. Who in the world does so much preparation for one day that they're going to drink a little bit more? I mean, the Super Bowl parties, but that's not even close. They, they do preparation. They have like limudim and gemaras and sugiyas. The f- fantasy football teams and they get up there. Their wings. Yeah. This is like the like shuva, like crying, yearning to be better, and using this day as an unbelievable transformative day. So I'm is opening up the world of Purim. So you might think, like, isn't it like three weeks away? We got a lot to do in these three weeks. Okay, my friends? And even before Purim starts, what month is coming up next? In nine days from now? Adar. 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 The last month of the year. Nisan is the beginning of the year. Right? This should be the new month. That's Nisan. And the end of the year is Adar. So we're moving towards the end, the end. The end of something is when things get, you know, the going gets tough, the tough gets going. But the end is when it really, who said that? Is that Churchill? Uh, Churchill or Eisenhower. Okay, there's an MS to it. At the end, the end, the end, right before the end, was neither of them? That's Pitbull in the song. Oh yeah? <laughs> the going gets tough. Fuck is going. Okay. <laughs> he was the first one. He didn't say it to shame Omri. So, what is going on with the month of Adar? So we have to begin with the month of Adar. To really get into Purim properly, we need to know what's going on in Adar. Adar is... There's a lot of mystery around the month of Adar, which we'll have to get to. Adar means a tree. A maple tree. The Gemara says a person who plants an Adar, he plants a tree, a maple tree, Miskaim Nechosav, his wealth will remain. A lot of people in the world are now looking for ways to preserve their wealth as things are getting a bit funny in the financial sector. You have to plant an Adar. You have to plant yourself in the month of Adar, which will explain. I'm not giving official financial advice, but I'm giving official rabbinic advice. If you want to have financial success, Plant an Adar. Get yourself planted in the month of Adar. Either means plant a maple tree, but it, we're going to learn it means something much deeper. There's something going on. Plant yourself in this month of Adar, which is a very wondrous month. And smack in the middle of Adar is Purim. 
So anytime that you have a Chag in the middle of the month, that helps to define the full expression of the month. The middle Chag of the month is like the full revelation of that month, because the moon is, in, is full in the middle of the month. That's the full, full revelation of the month. Whatever you have in the beginning of the month is all the potential of the month. So it's interesting, Tishrei, the sixth, seventh month of the year, it begins with Rosh Hashanah, and the middle is Sukkot. So Rosh Hashanah is the potential, and then the full actualization of what Tishrei is supposed to be is Vesamach Bechagecha is Sukkot. Purim, we'll see, Purim is the middle of the month. Rosh Chodesh Adar is the beginning of something very, very big. So let's learn about Adar. So the Gemara says in Tainus, Chavtes, and we're actually going to be learning a Sefer for anybody around the world. This is Mamish, holy stuff. This is very, very holy stuff. The Sif Sechein, from the Tzadik of Klois, from the Kreis, excuse me, from Satmer. He was already Nifter some time ago. And he, uh, he wrote a wondrous Sefer, basically all the introductions to all Hasidic thought. Hasidic, Kabbalistic thought, an amazing Sefer. They used to come out as kuntresses. They were just small pamphlets. And in the last year, they put out, like literally, they bound it and made it beautiful. It's like, there's a bunch of these, there's like six of them. They come in a big box. Where's he from? From uh, the state, from Brooklyn. And uh, his Torah, though, has gone everywhere. It's spread over the whole world. And Sigit, he was saying in the end. I believe Rav Zucker is doing a Chabura in Sif Sechein right now in his shul. This has started to take over the world. It's very, and it's the language that's so relatable and so deep at the same time. Are there any translations of it, or do they just for now have the Hebrew? There's no translations, so, you know, learn with the Chavrusa and translate. But the, the Hebrew is straightforward. It's a good safer if you want to learn as like a straightforward. He speaks things out. His notes on the side. It's, it's brilliant. It gives me so much hana. It's both a beginner safer and also for non-beginners, because it's all there. So he has a piece here about... Adar. So the Gemara says in Tainus, Chof Tes Samad Aleph, Mishenichnas Adar, when Adar comes in, when the month of Adar begins, what should you do? Marbin B'Simcha. You should be happy. Not just be happy, Marbin, increase happiness. Increase your happiness. It's going on a Gemara also that says when the month of Av comes in, Mematin B'Simcha. When the month of Av comes in, which is when the nine days are, which is the, a lot of destruction that happened to the Jewish people. When, the, when Av comes in, you lessen Simcha. But when Adar comes in, Marbin Simcha, you go up in Simcha. One thing you see, though, from here is that a Yid is always Simcha. The Jew always has to be happy. And we want to teach the whole world about this. Even though it's Hashem Simcha, you have to always be Simcha. David Melch said it. King David gave us a command. Ivdu et Hashem be simcha. Serve Hashem with simcha. Are we ever not serving Hashem? No. Is there such a thing that a Jew, he serves Hashem when he's in the base medrash. But when he goes and you know, pays for his gas at the pump and the person you know, is trying to help him and he's, is there such a thing of not serving Hashem? And not saying thank you to the to the, the, p- the person doing the pump, you can't you're not allowed to do that. You have to say thank you. Besimcha, it's always we're never not serving Hashem. We're always in a consciousness of serving Hashem, all the time. However, comes Adar. Not only should you serve Hashem, besimcha, it's something marbin, a lot, a lot of simcha. So a lot of people see things. There's a, it's brought down that you. Start doing like pranks and stuff, or at least decorating the base medrash, putting up signs, Mishinifnas Adar Bar Mesimcha, or putting up signs that the Mazel Adar is Dag, which we'll get to later. That the, every single Hebrew month has a constellation that's associated with it, a Mazel. They call it the, what's it called? The horoscope? The, the, the zodiac, the horoscope. So we, it comes from Sefer Yitzira. It's from Sefer Yitzira. 
you know, your, your random Tweedlebug 472 in the, in the Sunday Times horoscope column, probably not interpreting it according to Amitosa Sheldavar. So I wouldn't uh, take her advice there. But we have the secrets of it, of how to interpret the horoscope, how to interpret what's happening in the constellations. And the constellation, I mean, you need to know people who really know what's going on. And one of the, of the constellations, one of the months, is Adar. And Adar's constellation is the fish. So people put up signs of fish. It's all about having fun, Adar. Some people already start dressing up, Rosh Chodesh Adar. Some people start uh, dancing and putting on costumes. It's a very, very nice time. So says the Rebbe, Yesh lis boinen. simcha mazuweis. What is this special simcha of Adar? I mean, he has a question. Is it not that all the holidays that we received, every single Jewish holiday, are they not also days of Simcha? They, of course they are. They're all days of Simcha. Ubifrat, and specifically the Torah points out the three pilgrimage festivals to Jerusalem, where it says about those festivals, V'somach da you have to be happy. A special happiness. So what is this happiness when the month of Adar comes in, of Marbim B'Simcha? It seems that all the days of the year were supposed to be B'Simcha, general Simcha, and all the holidays already have a Simcha attached to it. And moreover, is the Simcha of Pesach, is the Simcha that you have to do actions that bring about like lots of Simcha? No, it says you have some meat, some wine. For women, you're supposed to get new clothing, jewelry. The kids, they're supposed to get special candies and treats. Whatever makes that person the simcha, that's what they get. But, you know, a, a nice bottle of wine, a piece of wagyu, a new dress, new earrings. You know, for the kids, some candies. Uh, nice, simcha. So yeah, it could be Nusfarim, for sure. Anything that gives you a Gewaldige Simcha. A Gewaldige Simcha. Gewaldige Simcha. And that was the Halacha, the men should get specific, like, uh, meat and wine, and the women get clothing. The women get clothing. New clothing. In, in Achag. In Achag. In the three pilgrimage festivals. That's the Simcha. Have some wine, some meat. But do you see anything that's like a major thing that you do to bring about a very epic level of simcha, like you find on Purim, where there's a specific mitzvah of mishte and simcha? There's a mitzvah on Purim of mishte. Mishte means to, to drink. The Gemara says, Mechayiv inish lebesume bepuraya. A person has to get bisume, spicy. Rashi says there, l'shtakr b'yayin. Rashi says yayin. Not everyone agrees with Rashi. But you have to get high in a nice way. I'm not talking about narcotics. You have to get high. L'bisume. Rashi was a, a vinter, correct? It's more, it's more marginal. It is. <laughs> The shtak of a Rashi is is endless. By the way, m- most people go like Rashi. Most people understand like Rashi and understood that it wasn't just a marketing thing. That, that the Ash, Rashi because that was the whole mitzvah of Purim was the wine. Rashi wasn't coming like you know what a great way to let's like make a shot in the Gemara to get rich. Is that that's the simple meaning of the Gemara, of the, of the, of the Megillus Esther. The Megillus Esther is the whole miracle happened through drinking wine, red wine, dry red wine. Dry red wine. Which we'll get to as we get closer to Purim. We'll speak more about this whole Indian. But we don't find such a thing that like on Pesach, that you're supposed to like really drink a lot. There's four cups spaced throughout an entire night, from the beginning of the night until dawn. We don't see anything on Sukkot that you have to like 
you know, drink such a atzeres, shavuos, is there such a thing? Chanukah, is such a thing that you have to like, you have to really like drink? What, what is going on by Purim here? Ad kadei l'shtakar b'yayim? And also, furthermore, gam l'shapes b'begodim l'oira simcha? Everyone's dressing up. My kids dress up the whole year. But like, on Purim, they really do. They take it very seriously. So, you find a thing, like you visit people in Shavuos, at their house for their Shavuos suda, and they, they hand you like costumes and funny hats to put on to help the simcha of Shavuos. I, I, I never saw such a thing. So what is this simcha? There's a, there's a mitzvah of Adar Marbin B'Simcha. And also, furthermore, all the other holidays, the simcha is only an isolated time, per se. Mishanich of Vesanach Tebechagecha, be happy on Pesach, on Shavuos, on Sukkot. When it comes to Adar, something about Purim, the whole month, Mishanach Nas Adar, the whole month turns into like Purim. Many people actually think that. They think the whole month of Adar is like Purim. And they, they try, they're very machmir in that halacha. I hope they'd be more machmir in Shachas Min Chamayrif. And not as machmir on, you know, making... But even though, okay, I'm not judging. I'm saying if that's their mitzvah. Oh, it's, Rabbi, it's my mitzvah. So how did this turn into the entire month becoming like this Indian of Simcha? Okay, everyone have the question so far? What is the simcha of other? Why is it so unique? Why is it so explosive? Why is it more than any of the other chagim? Why is it a whole month? And why is the simcha on Purim like way more? Where there's such halachas, maisius, of drinking, of getting spicy. What is going on here by Purim? Okay. This is classic fashion the holy books like to do. These are questions that the Rishonim are already speaking about. Like, what is going on? So, one of the ways that Sfarim like this, from the students of the Baal Shem Tov, they'll ask a number of questions, and then they'll tell you, in order to answer this question, we need to give you background, usually about deeper concepts. And once you have the background of these deeper concepts, you'll see that all of the questions start answering themselves. Meaning that the Baal Shem Tov came to the world, our great Rebbe, the Baal Shem, to teach the world that if you have access to a lot of the secrets that we're going to divulge, then all of your questions start falling away. All the problems and the questions start falling away. Which is reminiscent of in the times of the Ramban, Times the Ramban, which was in the 1100s, 1200s. During that time, there was horrible crusades, there was horrible uh, death and pilgrimages, uh, uh, pogroms, excuse me, against the Jewish people. And one of the students of the Ramban was, was Nifter. And before he was Nifter, the Ramban said to him, he said, when you go up to heaven, I want you to promise that you'll come back down to me and explain to me why these things are happening. Why all these terrible things are happening. Lo aleinu has for shown to the Jewish people. So he went up when he, when he was passed away and it took uh, some time. The Ramban did not see him in a, in a dream, in some revelation. And after a long time went by, finally the Ramban, the, his student came back, and the Ramban saw him, and it was a chaleim emes. It's, there's ways that we can tell if something is a true revelation inside of a dream. We have ways to discern that. And he said, he said, you know, what, what took you so long? Like, he said, Rebbe, down where you are, there's, there's no answers to those questions. But where I am up here in heaven, there's no more questions. Where you are, there's no more, there's no answers. But where I am, there's no more questions. It's clear. I see things clearly. The Baal Shem Tev came to the world to give us like a little glimpse into what's going on. All of a sudden, things start answering themselves, even down here. And Purim is the ultimate day of that. 
that you get to a level of Machayv Inish Lebesuim Bepuraya, that even all the difficulties of your life, somehow you could say a Boruch Hamanan, that's absurd. We spend the whole, our whole life getting rid of Haman. So there's going to be some secret that we need to understand of somehow that Haman is here to help us. So let's see a little bit as the Baal Shem Tov opens up a window into what's going on. So he says, that we know that in the same way that Yaakov and Esav, that they split, Jacob and Esau, they split two worlds. Esav got this world. That's why the people that are into this world, they seem to have big, big success and big, uh, big, uh, whatever, private jets and this and Hollywood stars, the world of Esav. And Yaakov got the world to come. Yaakov got eternal life. Esav took this world. That's why he's very powerful in this world. Even though we were hoping that Esav would do tshuva. Imagine Esav would build these, these major skyscrapers for Hashem. Imagine he would fill them with base medrashas and places of learning Torah, speaking about God. Sadly, most of these places are places to deny God or just run after this world. But we want to be Makar. We want to bring Esav to the side of light. We want to bring him out of the dark side. So remember that fight of Yaakov and Esav? Remember that, that unbelievable night? Yisabek Ish Imoy Adalai Sashachar where Yaakov and the Sarashal Esav were battling each other? So it wasn't just about the Pachim Katanim which is about the light of Hanukkah and about the neshama. There was a lot that happened that night. That was a cosmic event that set things into motion for all eternity. What happened that night, I'll have to pick up with this Mitzvah Shem tomorrow. What happened that night is Yaakov and Esav fought over the different Hebrew months of the year. Who was going to have power over those months? Who would own those months, if you will? Because whoever would own those months and have dominion over those months, there would be more favorability, so to speak. The stars would align, to speak in the words of the astrologers, the, the astrologers, astrologers. Astronomy, astrologers. No, astrologers. Like the ones in Mitzrayim, the stars are aligning. Yeah, astrologers. Astrologers are the signs. Now, we believe in that but we're not limited by it. But whoever would have those stars, whoever would have that lining up for them, that would be favorable. Yeah, Zevi? Did you say you were resting for the different months? So for example, like, Av, you said it's a uh, time of mourning. So Av, Bala, Av, who do you think took Av? Esau. Esau took Av. So you got Adar, and what about the other ten? So we're going to see here, we actually did not get Adar. We got the first three months of the summer, which is what? Nisan, Iyar, Sivan. And we got the first three months of the winter. Tishrei, Cheshvan, and Kislev. Where are all the Hebrew holidays? During those months. Those months have the favorability that we got great, great blessing during those Hebrew months. So the question is, there's one anomaly. Purim. Purim. Esav took Adar. So Esav took Adar. So how does somehow Adar fall out in Adar? We're ending on a cliffhanger, Rabbi Yisrael, we should be Zerich and Mamish, to learn the rest of the Shittim, and Mashiach, 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 and Mashiach,